Hello and welcome back to Curiosity Mine and a really quick but really interesting piece of Lightning Ridge opal mining heritage. You see, the thing about Lightning Ridge is that even today it's a really isolated town. It's just a long way from anywhere and that informs a lot of the decision making that happens by the people who live and work there. It's not as isolated as it used to be. Nowadays obviously we have sealed roads and we have the internet and we have Amazon deliveries just like everyone else, but it's still very remote. It's literally just a long way from anywhere. The nearest roundabout to Lightning Ridge is 75 kilometers away. The nearest traffic light is 270 kilometers away. The nearest Bunnings is 350 kilometers away. And the nearest capital city is 700 kilometers away. And it's not even the capital of the same state. A century ago, things were much, much worse. The roads were dirt and they turned into quicksand when it rained. Motor cars were rare and unusual mail services were slow and unreliable so to cut a long story short people really had to make do with what they had and that meant often finding ingenious solutions to problems this is Harry Zack or Harry Sachs depending on who you ask Harry Zack was a man who jumped ship in Australia back after World War one he came to the ridge they say in 1920 and lived out his life about an hour's drive from here, out at the Graw and Glengarry Sheepyard Field, lived in a bark hut. But Harry was also a bit of an engineer. He was a blacksmith and a metal worker, and he was an innovator by necessity. One of the items on display at the Lightning Ridge Historical Society's permanent exhibition in Marilla Street, Lightning Ridge, is a steel anvil used by Harry between 1920 and 1976, which was made by bending the steel axle bar of a dray or flat wagon into a kind of T shape. And we do have a wool cart at the beginning of the town that we keep as a token to those early days of tank sinking and life on the land. We have the original uh, axle from a, a dray that hasn't been formed into an anvil. But in earlier years, this would have gotten a lot of use because sharpening picks and uh, the tools that were made and remade because you just couldn't run down to Bunnings in those days. This one certainly has had a lot of use. Innovation and reuse are inevitable on the opal fields, not because they're trendy or environmentally friendly, although I suppose those are bonuses, but because there's no choice. Uh, phrases like waste not, want not, and make do with what you have spring to mind. You have to always be thinking about how you can turn things into other things to get other tasks done. If you'd like to see Harry Zack's anvil and a variety of other opal mining heritage items, you should stop by the Lightning Ridge Historical Society's Miner's Hut and Cottage Hospital at Lightning Ridge. It is worth having a look. This video was made with the help of the Lightning Ridge Historical Society with special thanks to Barbara Moritz. If you enjoyed this video, could you please consider subscribing to Curiosity Mine on YouTube and following along with all of the usual social media channels. I'm pointing down there because the links are all in the description. And thank you for watching.